here on the north end of the Woodmar Shopping Center. Here's the exception to today's rule. We're talking about little mom and pop stores, but J.J. Newberry's was a chain, was a well-known national change, chain, and it sort of anchored the north end of Woodmar Shopping Center. There was an entrance here, which I believe we are now walking in, then there was an entrance around the north side, so it was a kind of wraparound store. Newberry's was like a five and dime store with all sorts of household items, it seemed to have everything, and uh, the last time I remember being here at Newberry's was in the early summer of 1974 when I came in to buy a box, a window fan, and by then it was clear that the place was just about extinct. But back here, as we walk through the court, we're walking through Newberry's. I believe there was a snack bar, chrome, you know, you know, eatery up here in this corner all sorts of things and in the back there was a sewing department as I recall my mother and grandmother would come back here against this back wall to buy you know buttons and patterns and thread or whatever close to the to the sewing department was the toy department and it had to be right about here on this spot that I'm walking on now and there were these big shelving units and they were like flat tabletop surfaces, and I believe they had compartments underneath with sliding doors where they kept the extra stock and whatnot. And on top of these table surfaces, there were shelves built up for more surfaces. And each of the big table surfaces was sectioned off like into squares with glass, little glass partitions, like glass louvers. So you had these glass defined squares. And into these squares, toys would just be dumped. And we found things here in Newberry's that we had never ever imagined existed. And there's two of them which I want to talk about in a little detail. They were both made by the same company, which was called the Miller Toy Company. I believe it was a little independent mom and pop place, Miller Toy Company, and I believe it was, it was headquartered somewhere in the western suburbs of Chicago. In 1957, in the spring of 57, I was just graduating from kindergarten over at Jefferson School, the little beautiful school that was just torn down a couple of months ago. At that time, Jefferson School had a little library right in the front of the building, and my brother and I would go there throughout the summer of 57. They must have had maybe eight or ten books about dinosaurs, and if you can believe it, very few people knew anything about dinosaurs back then. And my brother and I kept taking out those same books again and again throughout the summer. We became the dinosaur expert, the dinosaur kids in this area. In fact, that fall in October 57, there was a big uh, Sunday article in the Hammond Times about us. At six and eight, they're memory wizards. So we were really you know, impressing all of our friends and teachers and whatnot with dinosaurs. I mention this because here in that summer, right here, the Miller Toy Company made these wax dinosaur figures. And their, all their figures that they did were wax, and obviously they made their molds, filled them with wax, and kind of blew the wax into shape from the bottom. Uh, but here in these little glass partition squares were these dinosaurs. There were like six, five or six of them, and they were big. But they weren't in bags or boxes. They just th throw them together on top of one another and pile them into these little glass things. And so it was very difficult to find, say, a triceratops with all three of his horns intact. You really had to look. But we got all of them. We didn't get the Tyrannosaurus Rex, unfortunately. These things were fabulous. But if those things were good, the next year, the Miller Toy Company outdid themselves. And so in the Christmas of 1958 it was, which for me was the quintessential best Christmas of all, the, the, that childhood fantasy sort of Christmas, right here on this area, uh, here in Newberry's. Miller outdid themselves. They manufactured what my brother and I con consider to be like the holy grail of all toys. They were the Miller Earth Invaders. They were these fabulous little, they were graduated in size, little wax figures of aliens supposedly coming from every planet and every star. They even had an alien coming from the North Star and one from the Big Dipper and one from Orion and one from Nebula and whatnot. They were in a little cardboard and plastic rocket ship and I got these for Christmas Eve and there's a picture in our family album of us opening them on Christmas Eve and holding these things you can just see the wonder in our faces this was this was the living end in terms of toys for the next few months we would come back here right on this spot and buy all the additional aliens from Miller and they were once again piled into these boxes it was very difficult to find them that were unbroken 
These toys, the Miller Aliens, have become real collector's items. And about 10 years ago, I was actually able to snag one of them in a bid on the market. The alien from Uranus. Really bizarre, a tiny little body with a big club and these giant hairy bear feet. Fabulous imaginative thing. Luckily for all of us enthusiasts and collectors, about 10 years ago, a very enterprising guy from New York actually was able to remake the Miller Aliens. He got actual unbroken mint models of each of them and made new molds and cast them in resin. And so my brother and I each got a set of those. And so it's not quite the same, but they look just about as good. The Miller Aliens, and we found them right here. And I have no idea of any other place anywhere in this area where you could have found it. But J.J. Newberry's had them right here. And just Newberry's just excelled as far as we were concerned in terms of the magic and the wonder of these childhood treasures. J.J. Newberry's right here. Now in the good old days, there were a lot of stores that weren't primarily toy stores that still sold toys on the side. And one of them, one of the best was this store, which was Stern's Hardware Store for many, many years. In fact, until fairly recently. They sold great hardware, I understand, but they also had a stock of models and toys. And since we live just a block or two over in this direction on Magoon Avenue, it was just a hop, skip, and jump to come over here and once again amaze ourselves with what we found within these walls. And here we are inside of what was Stern's Hardware Store for many, many years. Today it's a fish and bait and tackle store. And it was right in this area about here where I'm motioning that the large table-like shelf units existed. And they were four-sided shelf units, so you could walk all around them, and on every side of them, you could see, you could look at the models that they had. Stacked on shelves, you'd look at the end panels. I remember first seeing the Aurora Knight models here, the Black Knight and Blue Knight, seeing what the original box art looked like, and being just fascinated with them. Also, I remember in the summer of 1958, now bear in mind this is during the sci-fi space age craze of the late 50s, somewhere over here there were shelves and they sold these little plastic, hard plastic rubber figures called satellite men. There were six of them and they had little slots in their hands and they held weapons and whatnot and the weapons always got lost and I remember just pleading with my father, please come back here and buy us the satellite men, which he did. Another fabulous little place, you know, where you just walked in and never knew what you would find, and we're always glad when you did find something fascinating. There was another Sunday, I remember. It was in March of 1960. How do I remember this? I don't know. My father brought my brother and myself here my father to do his hardware buying. Of course, these guys did great hardware here in addition to selling models. And on these shelves that day, I saw the Bachman bird models. I went nuts over to the Bachman bird models, collecting all of them throughout 1960. But this was the first one I saw, the Baltimore Oriole. And I remember I was pleading with my father, could, oh, could you please buy this for me? No, 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 you don't need that. So after we walked out of here, we went, my dad took us down Calumet Avenue, down to the beach there by Lever Brothers, where the big casino is now. And on this cold, dank March afternoon, we stood there skipping stones into the lake. I don't know why. And I kept asking my dad, waiting for the right opportunity, how about that Baltimore Oriole model? Forget it. Somehow he relented. And I think it was the very next day, the Monday, we came here and bought that Oriole model. And that began my parade of Bachman bird models.